Construction Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Hello, welcome to some selected recordings from the Windows Azure Bootcamp, presented by Intertech. The Windows Azure Bootcamp was originally presented at Microsoft's office in Bloomington, Minnesota on May 25th and 26th. These videos are selected chapters from that material. Original material for the Windows Azure Bootcamp are made available at www.azurebootcamp.com. My name is Jim White, and I'm an instructor and director of training at Intertech. My email address is jwhite at intertech.com. Intertech is a consulting and training company located in the Twin Cities. We're located at www.intertech.com, but you can also follow us and find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. We're also the home of the Windows Azure User Group, available at www.azureug.net. This is a virtual users group, so come as you are, and we're happy to have you. In this first chapter, we want to introduce you to cloud computing and, more specifically, Microsoft Windows Azure. We'll take a look at exactly what is cloud computing. We'll examine a term used by Microsoft when describing Windows Azure, and that is the cloud operating system. We'll look at some scenarios that might describe your reason for moving applications to the cloud. And of course, we'll explore the cloud from Microsoft's point of view. Specifically, what is Microsoft Windows Azure? And finally, we'll look at the environment, that is the development environment, that's available for developing applications in Windows Azure. Now, there are many challenges facing IT organizations today. No surprise to you, I'm sure. Some of these challenges can be addressed in whole or part by cloud computing. Rising infrastructure costs. Most organizations have a data center in place today. The cost for those servers, networks, all part of those data centers continues to rise. And like a house, they always need to be upgraded and maintained. Organizations are looking for ways to shed some of those capital costs and expenditures and turn them into more manageable operational expenditures. In other words, CapEx versus OpEx. Organizations also have a tough time leveraging past investments in IT. Think about how your organization is managed or migrated through various technologies. For example, from mainframe to client server development, maybe with something like Power Builder, to maybe .NET today. How often were you able to leverage past investments, past experiences in the new realm? In moving to the cloud, we hope to leverage our current .NET ASP experience, for example, and also help try and keep a lid on some of those costs again. Data centers are typically pretty crowded places with many physical limits on what they can support. Once in capacity, the only answer is usually another bigger data center, and of course, the expense that goes with it. Is there a way for us to reduce the burden on data centers in a cost-effective way? And of course, again, the answer is yes, possibly through the cloud. Spikes in demand, for example, websites, as an example, can cause real headaches in outfitting our data centers. We often have to have a large overcapacity to meet the few large spikes the website receives over a year. For example, Domino's Pizza often experiences a 50% spike on their website on Super Bowl Sunday. How do they meet the demand without an extra large and unused capacity the rest of the year? And the answer, of course, is the cloud. Of course, security, be it physical or information security, is always a concern, made more complex by demands for greater transparency, greater access, either on the part of external clients and organizations or even internally. For these and many other reasons, organizations are looking to the cloud for help.
Now, with regard to capacity that I mentioned, Morse organizations have to continue to expand the capacity in a block-by-block -block fashion. That is, continue to put a new set of servers and bandwidth in place to support a larger and larger demand. This results in two problems. First, waste. When a new block is added in anticipation of a load, and second, when there is not enough capacity during spikes. What we often need is a model that's a little bit more flexible. The cloud offers that flexibility. I like to call the cloud the Goldilocks approach to capacity. Not too much, not too little, just right. Now I should mention that with regard to Microsoft's Windows Azure, we'll find that it can help do this, but to be fair, the capacity line here wouldn't exactly be this neat. Azure today provides no auto sensing capability to automatically grow and shrink as needed. The Azure model provides a faster and easier means to bring up or take down capacity, but it's still largely at your discretion. Is there a paradigm, an analogy we can use to understand how cloud computing might be able to help IT today? Well, electricity generation at the turn of the century, and by that I mean the last century, was an individual enterprise affair. Each company, say a hotel for example, had to generate their own electricity. Each had their own dynamo and electricity generating managing apparatus. Over time, other organizations began to sell and buy spare capacity from other companies until eventually companies grew up solely to produce and share that electricity. So computing power is at a point where we can start to draw some parallels. Today our organizations each have to have the infrastructure necessary to produce their computing power. Occasionally, some of us buy or share that excess computing power to others. Tomorrow, we might all be able to purchase the computing power we need from a utility organization, a utility computing service, if you will. And that utility service is what the cloud aims to be or provide. Use of the electrical grid analogy has to be done with some care. ACM recently did a series of articles on cloud computing. One article was quick to point out the analogy has some shortcomings in that the computing grid, if we can call it that, has to overcome a number of additional challenges that the electrical grid did not. Namely, we have things like security concerns that the electrical grid didn't have to worry about. We have pace of innovation. Moore's law applies to our computing world, and there is no real parallel in the electrical technology. And then we have limits to how much you can scale computational services. Latency around the world, especially given the speed of light and other concerns, all lead us to be a little bit cautious about using directly this electrical grid analogy when we think about cloud computing. So many look to the cloud today to address the many challenges facing IT. In general, they come down to a few key factors or reasons. We want to be able to save money based on a pay-as-you-go service that does not require a huge infrastructure investment. Or you want to approve your abilities. For example, think about the last time you set out to build a new application. How much time and effort was used just to get your development infrastructure up in place? These kinds of concerns certainly make using or thinking about using the cloud an advantage. So when we look for a definition of what is cloud computing, one way to look at it quite simply is a place to run your code. And it's a place to run your code to either save or make us money, or again increase or improve our abilities. Again, things like scalability, marketability, our time to market. Recognize when we're talking about cloud computing, there are at least three different types or forms of cloud computing. Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. Infrastructure as a service is essentially a data center. All the hardware and software necessary to host your applications and data. Flexscale and Amazon Web Services are two often cited examples of IaaS. Platform as a service, PaaS, is essentially IaaS++. 
In other words, a data center, all the hardware and software necessary to host your applications and data, plus a set of tools and an API in support of cloud-based application development. This is where Windows Azure comes in. Google App Engine is another example of PaaS. And then there's Software as a Service, SaaS, Package Commercial Software available over the internet in a pay-as-you-go model. Salesforce.com is the most often cited example of SAAS. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.